Yo, what is up my dudes? This is Divine Plays and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. So, uh, I know it's been a really long time since I've, uh, come back to this game. Honestly, I'm gonna throw it out there. I honestly forgot about this game. Um, but we back and, uh, ex we're exactly where we left off, I, I think. Um, so, uh... I'm not gonna lie, a lot of things are a little bit foggy since I haven't played the game in such a long time. So, uh, but I do remember that these two, they, uh, they're our first friends at this new school because, uh, we have been, oh my goodness. Anyways, <laughs> and we had a heart attack and we had to switch schools. So now we're in a new school, got some new friends, uh, meaning these two. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then Shizune, the one on the right, is deaf, and I don't know what's up with the girl on the left. I don't even remember her name. <laughs> Anyways, but, uh, let's ask about the library. Oh, yeah, is there a library in the school? Lately, I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives the kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. I feel like the music might be a little too loud. Let me uh, turn it down just a bit. Eh. How about that? Alright. Anyways. There is. It's in the second floor. We can show it to you sometime. Thanks. I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very anim animated. Animately. I, don't, I, I can't read. Throwing sideway glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. Nah, dude, they're talking about you. I quickly notice a conversation in sign is not enough to fill a, sil it's a silence. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. The dark-haired girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk at the last row. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Misha and Shizune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her. Even when, the, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done. But my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the, in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, He-chan. We've got to hurry or we've got to hurry already, since there is a lot of work for us to do. Oh y'all hate. <laughs> You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Gonna have to. Ah, oh, wait. The teacher said I'd have to see the nurse? Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own building. So we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside, with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the <laughs> right next to the school. I don't even know what I was trying to say there. <laughs> it's built in the same style, so it looks exactly or it looks it so it looks like it's actually a part of the main building. This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses off or all the nurses office. They even have a swimming pool. Ooh, 
swimming pool. How is that official? <laughs> you right. You right. Don't be silly, He Chan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Oh, you right. You right. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. Gotcha. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education? I guess it's necessary for a place like this. I walk in, hoping that this really will be only a quick visit like the teacher said. Oh man, I had a, <laughs> had a small little burp. But uh, anyways, I was going to say, this room right here, this picture, I don't know if any of you guys have seen it, but there's an episode of uh, Ghost Adventures. I think they went to a place that had a area that kind of looked like this. And I don't know, I was just getting that kind of vibe. And that's just what it's reminding me of. I walk in hoping that this really will be only a quick visit, like the teacher said. Oh, I already read that, I think. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text head nurse and a nameplate. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. It sounded a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neatly is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. This guy, clean your, clean your desk. Hello there. What can I do for you today? He is a young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheek wash that impression away when he smiles. Uh, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. Why, yes I am. It says so on the door, no? You can call me by my name or just the nurse like everyone else. Of course, I shake off my confusion, realizing I probably should grab his extended hand. Extended hand. His, his handshake is rather firm and friendly. Right, uh, I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet, uh, come and meet you. My name is Hisao Nakai. His eyes light up with re a revelation, and he snaps his finger. Oh, you're that Nakai! I was just reading your file in the morning. So is it Nakai or Nakai? I don't know. I can't. I don't know these names. I don't know how to say these names. Some kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? I don't know why that was so hard for me to read. He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Uh, yes. Good. Well, you've probably, probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone from my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there is a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Well, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. His joke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Yeah... Just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. You'll get used to it. Not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now, let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of papers around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling... Dark gray laminate flooring and all the equipment you'd expect from a school nurse's office. Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times a day and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and open it. 
So, you already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening, or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Rash stuff like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Uh, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm going to have to recommend you refrain from doing that. At least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow. But really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport, just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart. Oh, and risking another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There is no mention of the cause in your papers. Uh, not exactly. Yeah, you see, Doc, a girl confessed her love for me and I, my heart couldn't take it. So, in a sense, you could say, you know, she almost killed me, so uh, we gotta... We got. We got to go get her. You know. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so uh, so some exercise would do you good. We have physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Regularly. <laughs> Brisk walks or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe. There's a pool here. Oh yeah, so I was told. <laughs> you were? Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. Okay. He goes over my papers one more time and sets them on the desk, obviously content. Oh, why is it not? There you go. Good, that's it. Then, oh, that's it then. Come meet me if you ever need it, if you ever need something. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. I end up standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building, although to my eyes, they still look uh, one and the same. It's the first real look I get at the other students, so I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they're going, and I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us. One of us. I should go somewhere too, to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. The weariness in me only grows as I trudge towards the dorms, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There is a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms. Shrubbery, flowers, and that overbearing smell of fresh cut grass that fills the atmosphere. It dawns on my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. The dorm building is big and made of red brick. Like the others, it feels way too pompous for what it is. So I push forward going inside. It takes more time than necessary to fish out the key I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional, and boring. Just like in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the ends of the hallways. I poke my head around the corner of the common room door. Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back to the TV. Seems that only the girls around here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine, for, fine with me. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here, small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seem to have a toilet and shower, as well as four rooms. About halfway down the hall, I spy room 119. The nameplates on the room adjacent or on the rooms adjacent to mine are blank. 
I guess there are just two of us here. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Hello? Is anyone home? From inside, I hear a few mo a few movements, a few few <laughs> movements, then the clicking of way more locks than I thought these doors had. After oh, than I thought these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. A bespectacled boy is standing in the doorway. He is looking at me very intently through his extremely thick eyeglasses. Who is it? Blind? No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? He leans closer to me until our noses are almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. Hisao Nakai. I'm moving into the next room. I thought I would. I thought I should introduce my. His face suddenly brightens in realization, and he stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight to my diaphragm. Oh, sup, dude? The name's Kenji. Uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it, still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There are some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because they could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. His out of place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of some way to respond. I'd say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, he sow. Me? I don't think I could trust the chances. The only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? He thinks about this for a while. A wise decision. Dang. You are smarter than you look. Probably. What do you like? I hope not smart. What, wait, what, did he say what do you look like? He squints his eyes and leans closer again, but I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind, it doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of the door marked 119. Bleak beige walls, white linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. It's no one's room, in person, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting at the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems that there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. A note is pinned to the sleeve of one of my shirts, or one of the shirts. Hi, He-Chan. We've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if these don't fit, then if these don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mom and Dad. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. I kind of hope I would have, then there would be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed, feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The restless urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous about it before coming, and for the entire day of today too. I still am, I think. Dang. I have to distract myself somehow. So I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow, I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now... The bottles of medications neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick one... Or I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside, and then read the glued-on pharmacy label. Hisao Nakai. Two tablets daily to stay alive. <laughs> it doesn't really say it. Oh, this guy. <laughs> this guy, why are you lying to me? But it could just as well. It's kind of twisted, having your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little. But what choice do I have? With a sigh, 
I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle, being careful to check the correct dosages. Dosages. I loud. I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain. And after that, I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. It doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm and nest-like, against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Soon the light the lighter shade of darkness that is the ceiling looks or that is the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognize anymore. The night beckons me to sleep and I feel the coldness of unfamiliar unfamiliarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I knew. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, it almost sounded like it was going to do that. <laughs> All right, next morning. I wake up in a strange room. Solid morning light shimmers against the light gray ceiling. I had forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night. I? This is my room, isn't it? My room. This is the third room this year that I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed, it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment, deliberating until I open a bottle, shake out a pill, and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chaser of water, without thinking about the chemistry. My uniforms are in the closet. I slink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Putting on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic detergent invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one, a natural one. It feels like a school uniform, as it should. It's not much different from what, I'm, what I used to wear before. That goes for other things too. So far, this place seems more or less like a normal school. Except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday. Misha's constant laughter, and Shizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far. Maybe they aren't that normal. But I'm sure others are. Maybe they aren't normal, but... Or perhaps people like them are what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a whole lot of... I didn't see a lot of kids hanging around after class yesterday. So maybe there are clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. I mean, you'll have something to do. All through class, the question remains on my mind. So I decided to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Hello. She crosses her arms and shifts her, cra her, <laughs> her crazy gaze. <laughs> shifts her gaze. Slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of her pencil down so that the top is perfectly and evenly flat. Ah, sorry, sorry, Shi-chan. Is there something you wanted from me? Uh, yes. Translation, please? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, He-chan. My first thought is that means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. Well, anyway, Misha, please don't prove me right. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. There are also school events like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in the school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So, you actually transferred it in at a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Uh, sure. What's the festival about? Misha freezes. <laughs> I don't know, He-chan. The truth is, it's a local event, and I'm not from this area, so... 
You're useless, is what you're saying. <laughs> she starts signing desperately at Shizune, uh, to Shizune, asking her to bail her out. Shizune adjusts her glasses at the end of an oddly grand, grandose flourish and starts signing hard and heavy. Huh? Oh. Who cares? What? Misha puffs out her chest as she shouts Shizune's words out at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud. I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. Humans being or human beings evolve with new each or with each new generation. The ideas, ideals, and beliefs behind a festival will inevitably change with time. I don't think that's what she said. Now it's about delicious or now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher clears his throat very loudly, batting his long wooden pointer, pointer against his other palm like a baton. He shoots a pointed gaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a, a yelp and quickly or yeah, quickly <laughs> quiets down. Shizune doesn't seem embarrassed at all though, brushing it off without a care. Yeah, Misha, you're going to get us in trouble. We are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Shi-chan. What? That's right. He-chan, are you asking because you're interested in joining a club? It could have been my eyes playing tricks on me, but I think I saw a, sus <laughs> a suspicious glance exchanged between them. Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flutters in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the girl with long, dark hair get up from her desk and slip silently towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seems to notice her but me. I glance at the teacher, who's also looking at the dark-haired girl go. Why doesn't he say anything? Hee-chan, is something wrong? Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me looking at after the girl who left? No, nothing. Okay, well, like we, uh, like we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch today, do you? I thought I would go to the library and pick up some books. Uh, but, uh, not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? I mean, I got some time to spare. You know, why not? You know? Sure. Yay! Okay, he chan perfect. Perfect. The rest of class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that it's time to stop working. Shizune looks more than a little annoyed that we only just barely managed to finish all our work on time. I'm just glad we finished it at all. It's not a contest or anything. Exactly! As long as you get your work done on time, at least on time, then what's the problem? You don't need to get it done early. Oh, don't look at me like that, Shizune. Yes, it is, He-chan. Impossible. Really? Really. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Misha is always moving her hands and signing not only everything she says, but what anyone else is saying at any given time. Obviously, it must be so Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune? I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really. Shizune can't hear me, but it would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what isn't that what she's doing? No, she's at least looking at me. This is all very confusing and will take some time to get used to. It's not a contest, because contests are competitions over a prize. If there's no prize on the line, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me, as if surprised that I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. Shizune, slow your roll down. I never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. 
It's truly an alluring gaze. Are you sure, He Chan? Very sure. Ha! You're wrong, He Chan, because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in my abilities, and the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. <laughs> Shizune pushes her glasses up the bridge of her nose in a very matter of fact way. I'd argue more, but the bell rings, and she quickly gets up and picks up her bag, looking at me expectantly. I had almost forgotten that I was supposed to have lunch with them. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? That's so plain. Okay, let's go. Oh, let's go! Plain? Well, I guess. In my old school, I liked to eat outside, near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it near... I didn't find it until near the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there is a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Shizune and Misha pull me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed. Maybe some students favor eating in classrooms or in classroom or outdoors. I saw some of my classmates had box lunches. After we finish eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. So, he chan you wanted to know about clubs and stuff, right? Right? I sure did. Right, she chan Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask first. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn to face me again and Misha straightens her posture as if she is about to deliver a speech. he chan do you have anything you're really interested in? I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I usually just read a lot. Hmm, there is a book club, right, Chi chan Right? Oh, right? But it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, He chan it's a very... It's a really popular club. Ah, okay. But more to the point, He chan does this mean that you don't have anything... In, you don't have anything already in mind? <laughs> Not really. Good, great, that's great, he chan really great. What are you laughing at? Why is it so great? No reason. Well, he chan other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council. Hey, no. Oh, me personally, I just, I've never been the type of, I like the type of person to be in student council. I don't know, I just can't do it. I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic setup, though, just to tell me that. It kind of was. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the situation, or of the discussion, in a matter of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has to voice whatever she says. Ta! <laughs> hmm. Right, right. Hee-chan, maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. How about I don't? Huh? How about I don't? Why? Well, for one, we could hang out every day, He chan Shi chan and I are both in the student co student council. Actually, Shi chan is the president. El presidente. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this with. As if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts her glasses and signs something to Misha. Ha! <laughs> of course we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to- <gasps> So you're admitting that? Ah, no! We admit nothing! <coughs> oh, I kinda- <laughs> Oh, I screwed myself up with that one. I mean, he chan of course, it would be nice if you joined and we'd appreciate it. But even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one's school. Yup, it's true, he chan or it's true, he chan Besides, don't you want to spend time with us after school, he chan Why would I want to do that? I can't tell if she's either being genuine or if this is just really good acting. Both of them seem to be trying hard to look their cutest. Although they already, although they are already pretty cute to begin with. 
Well... So it's settled in. Welcome to the student council, he chant. Hey, I didn't agree to nothing. How dare you make that decision for me? Exactly. Like, what? No. No. Aw, see, she chan Of course it wouldn't go so easily. Yep, that's right. Oh, that's right, though. It would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh, well. she chan owes me candy now. You are betting on it? Hey, my life is not a game here. Shizune seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns t to her eyes. Wahaha! That's interesting, he chant Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, he chant If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, absolutely not. Aw, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive and therefore the same goal which is to get me to join the student council, right? Yep. Yeah, that isn't my goal. But what this means is that both of you can team up and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So I will have to decline. Boom. Take that. Hee-chan, I'm very offended. Are you saying you don't trust us? And that we would pull something so d disingenuous? That makes me sad. Sorry? It's hard to tell where Shizune's influence ends and <laughs> Misha's thoughts begin. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. No. How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? Paper football? Yeah, it's a game they play in America. You make a paper triangle and then you try to shoot it past goalposts and that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, he chan And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, she chan That means it's a game that really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact that you know what about it means you've probably, or you're probably surprisingly good at it. Haha, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How did you know, Hee-chan? Shizune frowns at Misha, telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with their attempts to get me to, into the student council, but I'm a little curious about what the student council does here. I've never been on here... Be oh, I've never been on one before, or even known anybody who was a member, so it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha, so maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Oh, I- oh, wait. I- oh, I also kind of like- I think- wait. I don't know. I feel like I read that wrong in my head. <laughs> okay, Hee-chan, how about Risk? The game of world domination- and I- oh my goodness, that was- That board game. That game. I remember I- <laughs> I used to play Risk a lot. Uh, back when I was younger with my cousins and my brother and oh man that game would take so long we would have to like it would go it would last till like uh, past midnight and like we would have to just set the game aside and continue the game the next morning and oh my goodness it's just the game never stops until like suddenly we wake up the next morning and then the game is and all the pieces are put away and we're just like, no, <laughs> who put it away? And then I would find out that it was either my my grandma, my grandmother, or like one of my uncles that were that uh, that was living with them. I don't know what that is. It's really fun, He Chan. You fight for control over of the world with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizune would be good at it. Yeah, I agree. If you want to play, we can after school. Aw, oh, really, Shi-chan? We can play just for fun. Or oh, we can play just for fun, He-chan. Shi-chan hasn't played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room then, He-chan. Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. Oh, these ladies. These ladies. Oh, they know what they're trying to do. They know what they're doing. I grimace to tell them, or 
Grimace grimace to tell them to how much I do not like this, but it's more for show than anything. So in the end, I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything con concrete just by accepting to take a look around and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. Whoa, dark haired girl. All right, well anyways, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this episode here. Uh, dang. Student council? These ladies, they trying to get me to join student council. I mean, just by the way the story is, or is going, I feel like I'm eventually gonna be in the student council. Ah, uh, but at the same time, it's just like, why? Me personally, I'm just like, why? I I would not. Even in real life, in high school, I didn't even join that stuff. Even in middle school, we had we had um we had student council, and I didn't really care too much about it. Um, uh, but yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Katawa Shoujo. If you guys enjoyed it, hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.